This next one is the same geometry nose. Only thing was changed was the materials uh, and using the attribute settings from the output of the geometry nodes. Oh uh, yeah, that one was a bit much. In this next one, you'll notice the typing is continuous. Uh, also, when spaces are in between the words, you'll hear the typing sound. We'll talk about this later in the tutorial. Well, the previous also had the solidified modifier. Uh, later in the tutorial, towards the end of it, you'll see how you can add extra modifiers on top of the object that's holding all the geometry nodes. Throughout the tutorial, you'll notice this is typing node group right here, but in the blend file, it doesn't appear to be in there. Uh, after I got done with the tutorial, I realized a better way of doing things, incorporated some of those nodes that are in the is typing group and put them into the make typing group and then saved it that way. So just disregard it. It's not talked about through the tutorial, but you will see it in most of the images. Sorry about that. Here's what the current node group will look like. Looking back at this tutorial, it didn't go as in-depth or as smooth as I hoped it to. Uh, throughout it, I talk about leaving a link in the description for the script file. I uh, changed my mind about that. Uh, towards the end of it, there'll be a URL on the screen, which will provide the blend file itself and also the uh, script file. So then you can kind of go backtrack and actually do a step-by-step -step and actually see everything that's going on within that blend file. Uh, not sure how much of a tutorial or how in-depth of a tutorial this will be. Uh, I'm going to go over all the options and everything and also go over the script and the scripts provided in the link in the description that you can download that. So as what we got here is right now we're clicked into the GeoNodes object. Right here is the GeoNodes uh, side here of our inputs here. We have off over on the right here, we can set a line delimiter. Let's move this over. Uh, set a line delimiter. We have our text, the starting frame when we want the animation to start, how fast we want the, each character to come up, and that will be on keyframes. Uh, so if, how it's currently set, it'll display one character, and then five frames later it'll display another character, and then five frames later another character. Uh, the next option we got here is how many frames that the animation will be displayed after it's completely done. So after right now we have, <coughs> excuse me, right now the animation is in the final stage. We're at frame 680 down here. So it'll be displayed for another 40 frames later. So that should be like 720, 719, 720, 721, now it'll disappear. Uh, the next option we have is to fill the face onto it. Uh, right now, as you can see, everything's uh, filled in with a green. If we were to toggle this, and it's just a, a on and off, a zero or one, if we toggle it down, now it'll just display the outline of it, of the text. And the next option we have right here is for the which material we want to pick from it so here and, and as far as the output goes the is typing output right here that's just going to display a zero or a one or output a zero or a one uh, if it's typing and spinning out new characters it'll be one if it's not spinning out any characters like before the animation starts say at between frames one and 19 the is typing will uh, spit out a zero and then after frame, what was it, 680? Backtrack, yeah, 680 puts the final period there. Uh, anything after 680, since the script's no longer, or the geo nodes are no longer typing anything out, it'll display a zero. 
the character count just counts up as each character goes. A would be one, space would be two, G would be three, E would be four, so on and so forth, and it'll just continue to count up on that. For a character period, character space, and character new line, when a character period, when a period gets passed through, it'll display a value of two. If a space gets pushed through, it'll display a value of three. And if a new line gets pushed through, it'll display a value of four. For those three attributes right there, uh, I've been using those in the script, which I'll show you in a bit later. Uh, you can use them in other places if you wanted to. Uh, and then the character position just spits out the character position of each character when it's getting printed out to the screen. With all these attributes, you can use them within your material nodes. You know, attribute here is is typing, character count, character position. Oh, that's just a random node. Uh, or other places. I'm sure you can use drivers with these. I'm not sure. I haven't tested that. So how it all works is our new line delimiter and our text right here. The text being inputted or, or typed into this area right here has to be all on a single line. And I'll show you that right now. So right now, here's the text, a geo type typewriter with sound effects triggered by Blender, blah, 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 new line. So as you can see, we got our first sentence here uh, triggered in Blender, dot, dot, dot. Then it's got the backslash n which stands for new line then we have new line and then the last sentence if we were to just copy this as three completely separate new lines but copy them as a whole and paste them into here Once it reads that new line that you keyed into that text pad, it'll stop typing. It won't read anymore after that. When you do this, you can type your sentence, put the new line in there, you know, type out whatever you want, put your new lines at the end of it, and then backspace one, backspace again, and now create a single line. Control copy. And now everything comes out. All these nodes. All right. So how am I going to get into this? Uh, this is going to be a bit brief. I'm not going to go into detail on everything because I'll end up losing myself trying to explain it to you and probably cause more confusion than good here. Uh, the main node right here is the strings to curve, which right now with the string input here, that's what we're feeding the string from up here. If we take that out of there. You can see there's a test, whatever we want. Whatever we want -y. There we go. That's kind of spelt a little odd. Uh, but here you can control everything that deals with the font. You can just grab the different font itself. Uh, where we go? Fonts. So in your Windows directory, right now you can see whatever font was on. I don't remember what was selected. And you can change your font with that. Uh, along with all the rest of the settings, you got your size in here, your spacing between your characters, the words, the line spacing, the max, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so after the information hits the strings, the curve, it comes out and it hits our switch. This switch is controlled by our face fill option over here. One is true. Zero is false. So, right now, if it takes, we'll have it set at false. If it takes false, it's going to skip over this fill curve. And the fill curve, is what it does is it just puts a face on all of the fonts. And then it'll just, skipping over at fault, it'll just display just the outline of the font. And then if we set it to true, it fills in the face. After that, it goes to realize the instances. Uh, each one of the characters being displayed uh, is its own instance. So we can see the instances. If we click onto the screens of curves, I'm going to hold the control shift button down and re-click onto it, which whoa, sends our viewer way right up there. Bring that back down. Uh, now we can see all the instances of the characters being popped out up here on the chart on the left. Let me backtrack. 
So right now the eighth character is the R or a space. I'm not sure what that is. And as we progress forward, you can see all the instances getting popped out through here. And then it also gives the uh, coordinates for the position on that. So with the realize to the realize instances that enables it to after the output of it that Blender can still look at it as single instances, which if you went into the material geometry you can use like random per island. Ooh, what's going on with that? Oh. So you can use that or what other options or whatever else you want to do with it. Prior to the strings to curve, how it's getting that information is uh, essentially through this make typing group node that I made here. That takes all the information from the main input, the delimiter, the text, the string, uh, starting frame, speed, last frame that you, or how many frames you want to display afterwards, and the current frame that uh, the timeline is on. If we click into this, we'll see the logic, <coughs> excuse me, we'll see the logic that enables us to, to start to display each character one after another. Uh, I've got the screen cropped pretty much right here. And this top left here, 152 collection, the 152 is a frame that we're on. Just to, so you, when I scrub through the line, you can see what was going on here. Uh, so we got our inputs here and then the output. The output side has three outputs, the string, character, and is typing. The string is what we see up top here. So I'll scrub through the line a little bit, which is after all the logic. <clears throat> the character is going to be just the last character that's being displayed, which later on we use that with the, uh, the period, uh, period, excuse me, period space and a new character line. And then the is typing is just saying whether the typing is taking place or not. The main worker node out of all these is this splice string right here. I'll zoom in a little bit on that. <clears throat> uh, that functions the same way as most splice strings or mid strings do in uh, programming languages. Uh, this top string input right here. We'll be taking the whole string, everything that we have over here as a text, or all of our text as one, and then it looks at it as each individual character as a number. Uh, so A would be one, the space would be two, G would be three, E would be four, so on and so forth. Uh, let me get this off of here for a second. <clears throat> uh, the position is where we want to start displaying information from. And then the length is how many pieces of information to display. So if we change this to zero, now we won't be seeing anything. If we change it to one, it's showing the first first uh, piece of information in that string. Two, it's actually displaying a space that we can't see. Three, four, five, so on and so forth. So the logic before all that is right here in the add character. Uh, we take the starting frame and we subtract the current frame we're on. We divide that by the speed of how many uh, frames we want to <coughs> go by until a new character showed up. And then I have to add one here. I'm not quite sure why that's going here. Uh, I can show you that. All right, let's do, whoops. Text string the value. We'll take the output of this, put it there. Okay, so if we scrub through the line, we're going to go to frame 19, which is the first frame. Why is it showing one? This is the first frame before we want to start. Oh, we got to set the decimal on this. All right. So right now we're on frame 19. As we go to 20, it's spitting, our logic right here is spitting out a whole number of one, which in turn it's saying show one more character or one character in the splice string. If we move ahead, we're at frame 20 right now, frame 24, frame 25, it gives us another whole number, which would be the space. 26, 27, 28, 29, 
30. We're at our next five frames later. It spits out another whole number. So that in turn is adding to the length of the string right here. Uh, let me get this up out of here. And then there we go. There's three frames that went by or uh, three positions that were displayed. In order to get the single character that's being displayed, we use a very similar logic to this. Let me move this over. So right now we're using the value coming out of here to say which to, uh, which which piece of information to display next in the string right here. We're going to do the same thing with a second splice here, but the difference is get this out of there. Uh, as we showed in the earlier one here, we start displaying everything at position zero. This we want to position, we want to show the same length of information as the first one, but we want the information to start later. So if we change the position here, right now it's starting at the zero, which would be the first character. Oh, let me change this so we can see what's going on here. So right now, this is just mimicking what's on the top here. Uh, so right now, we're starting to display three pieces of information uh, starting at position zero. If we start at position one, now it's just displaying the space and then the second character. And if we change this to two, we're just displaying that single character. So we'll take the value coming out of this, subtract one from it, and use that as our start position. And now we're showing uh, the only character, the last character that's being displayed. So there we're at frame 30. Thirty-five, we got our next character. Thirty-nine, forty is our next character. And as far as seeing if the typing is taking place, we do it up here in the red framing. Uh, just a couple comparisons. The top one right here is we check on the start frame and see if that is greater than the start frame. If so, we send out a signal of one, and then we do a comparison between the string length and the current string or the current character count of what's coming out of this uh, these brackets right here. And then we just do a comparison on that and send out a zero or a one for the is typing or not. That is off one frame. If we go to 680 and move this all the way up. I'll move this over. Uh, let me add some stuff here. Grab a value here. Oh. What am I doing here? Oh. So, right now, sorry about all that. Right now, we're at frame 680, which is the last frame that something gets typed out for. Backtrack one. 679, the period is not there. 680 the period is there and that's the last character or that's the last piece of information in the string we're feeding it so if we plug this comparison node into it we can see what's going on let me move this down sorry about all this uh right now we're at 679 and it's shown us a one and then if we backtrack through the whole thing I'll go all the way back here so right there we scrub through the whole thing from 20 which was our start point over here on the left of the animation it's displaying one if we go to 19 it's displaying zero but like I said if we go to whoa Sorry. If we go to 680, which would have been the last character, it's kicking out a zero. I'm not sure why. 
if we go back one to 679, it is saying that it's typing, but as soon as it hits 680, which I believe is this less than comparison right here, since it's less than the value of what's getting inputted into it, uh, we'd have to do a less than equal to, uh, and I didn't put too much thought into figuring that out. Uh, it's just something I'm living with. Uh, editing this into the tutorial, sorry about this, uh, created a mistake. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned how we got rid of the is typing group nodes back here and then incorporated that into the make typing nodes, which we're currently looking at, uh, through that process and neglected to add some math back in here to make the text disappear after the lasting frames for this is particularly 40. Uh, what we've seen before was, I'll get rid of these two. Uh, in the last pass things I said, all that is still true, except coming out of the add character, that was controlling the length uh, that part changed a little bit uh, to this node structure. If we backtrack right here, here's where we're adding the length into it. Just before that is a switch. The switch is getting triggered by all these nodes right here. If all these nodes right here, which I'll go over, uh, had the value of 1, true, it would pass the information coming out of here. If they come off with a zero, if these add up to a zero, or if they spit out the value of zero, it's going to pass zero faults into the length, which would not display anything as we showed earlier. So how we came up with this down here, this node, this first node right here, it takes the length of the full string that we're passing into it, it multiplies it by the speed, the number of frames that we're going to carry out a character so we can get a full total length of how long it's going to take or how many frames it's going to take to spit out the text that we're putting into it. After that, we need to offset it by one to uh, get rid of the first character's position onto there. After that, we need to add in the start frames, incorporate the start frames into it, so we're adding in 20 more frames. And then after that, we need to add into the last frames, which would be 40 into that. For whatever reason, we got to add one more into it, and then we do a, with all that right there, we do a comparison of what that value is to the current frame that we're on, which is the threshold down here, and then that gets tossed into the switch right here. If the comparison comes out uh, zero, then then the switch will pass along the faults zero information to the length here, so it'll just pass along a zero length to it. And then if it comes out positive, it'll end up passing out whatever value from here, and it'll go just go through the switch and then come out and then spit out the length on that. So when it comes out of that group node, it'll go into a string length, and it checks the string. That's what actually determines the character count of how many come out of that. Uh, then it also goes into these replace and string lengths right here. So it'll take the just a single character it got spit out. It'll do a uh, it'll <clears throat> do a replace here of a period, and and we're replacing that period with just two values. I just picked one one. It's not doesn't mean eleven. It just means one character and then a second character. So there's two characters. Then we do that string length right here. And, oh, excuse me. Uh, we check that string length right here, which is two, and then that's how we determined earlier on when we said the period is two, space is three, line is four. Do the same thing right here. We spit the character right there. We check if it's a space, which there's actually a space there. Oop. Uh, it'll take that space and replace it with three characters. And again, I just use one, one, one. Uh, and then it spits that out. And then the same thing for the new line. This is the line break that we used. Uh, what else are we doing? With these different outputs from the output attributes, if you use them and utilize them in your materials, you can get different effects. Right now, this is the is typing one. Oop. 
plug that into there. So when it's typing right now, it's displaying red. When we get to line, what's it, 680? It's not typing anymore, and it'll just change to another color. If you wanted the value to change around while it's typing, you could play around with the position of it. Oh, you can grab. And colorize the different islands. All right, now I'll move over to the script. Alrighty here. <clears throat> with the script, there's a bunch of variables at the top that you would have to fill in to, with, to coincide with how you name things. Uh, I'll start partially through this. I'll start with this section right here. Uh, the geo object name, which geo object test, that right here is the object that you did all your geo nodes with. And then the rest of these attributes here are the attributes that we found over here on the output attributes. In order for the sound, you need a speaker. That's our speaker name. When you add a speaker in the NLA editor, you'll notice over here on the left, there's the GeoNodes test that there's a speaker, we need that speaker name. If we happen to change the speaker name, we change the speaker name over here to speaker underscore test. It also changed it over here. So your speaker name has to coincide with the speaker name up here. Uh, the track name, it automatically, Blender automatically says, or labels it as soundtrack, which you can see right here, soundtrack. And then as far as the strip name goes, Blender automatically adds it as NLA space strip, which, well, is right here. We really can't see that. There we go, NLA strips. So those three names have to coincide with how you have your system named. Uh, and also the length of it, however long the default length is when you first add it into there. Okay, so after you have all those names and everything corresponding to how you named your attributes and everything like that, we have up top here, we have render on. It's either gonna be zero or a one. Uh, when it's zero, the script will work on a timeline. There was a, they had an issue. Let me backtrack with that. Had an issue with this. Going back down here to the bottom right here, when we do the handlers and we hook into whatever method we want to work with, if I was using the frame change pre or the frame change post uh, and hooking into the main function up here or the main definition up here, uh, the script would move the sound around and it would do exactly what we wanted in the timeline. But as soon as we went to go render it, it didn't work. The render didn't follow it. So uh, in order for it to work with rendering, we had to use the render right. I tried using both of them at the same time and Blender continued to crash. So in order to check everything out in the timeline, how to use the frame change in order to have everything output when it was rendered, I had to use the render right. So instead of toggling or instead of flipping back and forth and commenting them in and out, I just put this toggle up here. So zero and one. Uh, you have to run the script and then it'll come through. It hits this main function right here, this main method right here. It does a check. It grabs the object. It grabs information from the geo nodes uh, and places that in a geo attribute uh, variable. We grab the speaker. Grab the speaker information here. So right here we grab all the geometry known attributes. 
what the script mainly does is it checks what keyframe the timeline is on, uh, if a character is being a new character is being spit out or not, and then it'll take the sound speaker within the NLA editor and it just moves this around to whatever frame. I'll show you. Scripting. Animation. And it just moves. I'm going to uh, scrub through the timeline on the bottom down here. And it just moves it. Oop. As you see, it's just moving it around on the timeline. Each time a new character gets popped up, it's just changing the position on the timeline of when uh, make sound come out of the speaker. Uh, so we do all of our checks right here. We get the information we need. We go through some if checks right here. Uh, you could modify this. That's the reason why it's kind of split up right now. Like here's for a period. It'll do a period check. If we want to sound off. Oh, let me backtrack. Uh, up towards the top right here, we have period sound, space sound, and new line sound. Uh, one would mean, yes, you want to hear sound. You want to hear a typing sound when that character is spit out. And zero is you don't want to hear a sound. So right now it's set up that... Oh, excuse me. Right now it's set up so you'll hear you'll always hear a sound when a char when a normal character is being typed. Uh, but then it'll do a check, and if a period is getting typed, we'll sound off. We want to make a sound for that. If a space is being typed, we don't want to hear a sound. And for a new line, we don't want to hear a sound. Uh, later, right, right now, I'll show you. It does all those checks right down in this section right here. If you wanted to, you can add extra speakers and more information to the top here, having to check your other speakers, you know, adding your additional speakers up here and play different sounds for those. Uh, so right now, this sound strip typing is the speaker, is, blah, 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 is this entry right here on the NLA editor. If you added a second speaker in there, you'd have another entry down here. You would have to fill that information in, do some editing, fill that information in, and you can make it have a different sound when it hits the end of the line or hits a period or hits a space. They're the three options that we got right now. So in a bumbling nutshell, that's how the thing functions. Uh, any questions that you got, just make it a direct question and I'll answer it one by one. Uh, for me to go over this whole thing, it would just be insanely long. And I bumbled my way through this with basic uh, programming knowledge and to try to apply that to how the node system works to get things to, to type out and follow the frames. Uh, but I do this as a hobby. I'm not completely fluid with it. So it's the reason why this is just a brief tutorial or mainly a walkthrough on it. I uh, hope you found this all inf information useful in some sort of way. If you could follow through with all my bumbling, I'm sorry about that. Uh, any other questions that you have, please post them. I'll answer them directly and to the point. Uh, if i got to provide another little video for, for that little point, I'll do that. Uh, if you got better ways of doing this, definitely speak up. And, I don't know, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Here's the URL for the Blender file and script file. It's a github.com slash sideways up Joe slash blender dash geometry dash node dash typing. Whoops. <laughs> uh, one thing I forgot to mention throughout all this uh, is since you're applying, let me scroll over here on the right hand side. Uh, since you're applying the nodes, the ge geometry nodes modifier to an object, you can also add other modifiers afterwards. Uh, throughout everything that you've seen throughout the video, uh, the solidify modifier was enabled. Uh, right now it's enabled right now. And I'll just take it off just so you can see what it looks like. How it thins everything out some. And then if you wanted to, you can add other modifiers. Here's what the wire modifier looks like on top of that. kind of a cool effect. Uh, they were the only two that I tried. I uh, just thought I would mention just keep on adding stuff and experimenting and trying out things. A couple extra notes I forgot to add through here is if you do go to add an extra speaker to this uh, to get multiple sounds out of the typing, the cone of the speaker needs to be facing the camera 
and also you can rotate that animate that speaker itself to start panning left and right in and out adjusting the volume with it and also this whole thing throughout that script right there when you're gaining access to the attributes from the geometry nodes you can apply this to absolutely anything uh, this is this seems like it's a decent foundation uh, one thing I do not know which I definitely would like to say is the scalability of this if you hit a big scene with a lot of stuff how this is going to react uh, don't know about that well again hope it was useful to somebody take care of yourselves bye bye <laughs> well, hello again. Hopefully this is the last piece of information that I forgot to include here. Uh, for anybody who wants to render out just the sound of this, if you were to render out, <clears throat> render it out as images so you can do later processing in different programs, but you still want the sound to uh, sync with the letters coming out and you just want the sound. Uh, originally I tried rendering out up here to the top left with the render audio. Uh, tried a whole bunch of things within the script to get that to work and could not get that to work. Uh, if you know how to get the script to work with that and the method that we're using here of moving the speaker along the NLA line, that would be great. But as of right now, you can't just render out the audio. So you would have to go into your scene and then <clears throat> render out a video file. Excuse me. And then down for your video codec, select no video. And when it renders out, I did it in EV since we're not doing any video. I did it in EV. I dropped a frame right down to like nothing to eight. And it took about a second per frame or even actually less than a second per frame. And then the audio file is a video file, but there's no video onto it. And all the audio syncs up fine. That's how we've seen everything previous in the, uh, in the intro to this. And I really hope that that's it. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.